Hey guys, welcome back. Okay, this... I, I hope I make this a short video. It's just gonna be about my learnings in the first campaign. Some of the memorable moments and some mod details for the next campaign. So yeah. So I wanna start with the learnings. Things I learned. Well, I may have missed some here, but... Yeah, I'll say I'll say it anyway. One thing is less aggression pays off most of the time. Um yeah, I've had a couple of missions, well, not really a couple, a lot of missions where I was too aggressive, especially on those 10 turn missions. Yeah, I kind of have to rush it. I know this is pretty obvious, you know, being careful uh, pays off so who knew right it's pretty obvious but sometimes we can't help ourselves you know we tend to go to the farthest blue line uh, blue uh, tile so yeah sometimes don't do that there are times that that farthest blue tile is already too close to an enemy pod so yeah that's one Second thing I learned is the XP will come. In my private campaigns, I try to eliminate all enemies, you know? But in this campaign, I was more careful. And thank God I was, because... Well, I, I w wouldn't want to look... Bad on YouTube, but yeah. I mean, I'm not great, but at least not look bad, you know? So that's the learning. XP will come. You don't have to face every pod. If you can avoid a pod, do it. Because they, they will always reach Master Sergeant. As long as you keep the campaign going. And if I'm not mistaken, I have like... More than 30 Master Sergeants here. And a few more that are almost... Master Sergeants. I mean, look at Dance, 5 XP away. So yeah. Another thing I want to talk about, I learned this the hard way. We need more cover destruction. I want to show Arturito here. He is our explosive grenadier, the best one perhaps. Yeah, I want to try out Sapper. Needle grenades is so good, especially if you want to get all the loot. And um... Yeah, bonus damage to unarmored, it's so good. But I want to try Sapper, because taking cover out from Advent is so good. It's also good. I want to try it out. I might not use um a support grenadier anymore, only explosives and cover destroyers, because the support grenadiers... I didn't even use them in the late game, even if they were the metas, according to most um, players that are better than me at this game. Maybe I just don't know how to build them or use them, but I want to try out cover destruction, because with Sapper and Combat Engineer, uh, good luck to all the buildings out there. <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm also not going to use same column abilities anymore, so I can't get these two. I can't get these. Yeah. So, I'll try. Of course, I'll still build somebody like Arturito here. Pure damage right here. So, yeah. Now, another thing I want to talk about since we're at the topic is grenades are king against low HP enemies, especially. Because if, if, for example, you have an 84% shot on an enemy, a low HP enemy who has red, and we have red fog activated. And that same soldier has a grenade. You should use the grenade. The frag grenade, the plasma, whatever. Ensure the kill, because even with red fog, those low HP enemies yeah, if that's your last action, an 84 shot or a grenade, use the grenade. Because you if they don't retreat, they will they might hurt somebody. If they're the last enemy, you know. So yeah. 
Okay, one more thing I want to talk about. Well, there's still a bunch here. I made a list. But I want to talk about... Psionics. Yeah. I prolonged this campaign. That's why I have 30 plus Master Sergeants. I prolonged it so much, but I got the PSYOP so late. We only have one Master Sergeant PSYOP. And I'm not even sure the next PSYOP is at a respectable rank. I mean, it's this guy. Wow. It's so far down there. Because I started it so late, so... I think in the next campaign I should get a PSYOP maybe after taking the second region, or right before we take a second region. Yeah, I'd call that a mid-game, right? Yeah, I should have have a PSYOP already. Not really Master Sergeant, but it should be available now. Right? Okay, so... One more thing I want to talk about. Well, I keep saying one more thing. <laughs> I don't know why. Brain fart. Uh, where is Boris? Because he is the king of this thing. So... I want to show it with him. Illyrium Jets. Yes, they are OP. So OP. But it's worth it, man. The fun that com comes with it. It's so worth it. And not to mention, you you need an Archon Corpse for Illyrium Jets anyway. So that's pretty late. And there's another variant of this, a cheaper one that only requires a mech. The uh, Booster Jet. Let's, let's go check on that. If I'm correct, I think it's a mech wreck. It's right here somewhere. Booster jet. Yeah. A mech wreck, yeah. But bro, if this worked the same way as the Illyrium jet, just with less flight actions, this is too OP. So, in the next campaign, I will keep the jets, but I might do it the same way. Skip the boosters, go right for Illyrium right away. Just to keep it interesting, because this will... This will destroy Advent pretty quickly, but I don't know. Let me know. I mean, this is part of Mod Jam, so yeah, it's one of the mods supported by Mod Jam. So I don't know. Let me know if you want me to restrict myself from using the booster jet. I'm not even sure what it does, really, because we don't have one. <laughs> I haven't used this in my private campaigns either, because... I go straight to Illyrium Jets. So, yeah. Okay, one, well, another thing is about stats. For example, Ka I think Cassia is the perfect candidate for this topic. I gave her a mobility PCS and look at her stats. Without that, her mobility sucks. But, yeah. Basically, the lesson here is take her two best stats, and if you're using Commander's Choice, which I will still be using, um, base it on those two stats, not the sucky ones, because those can be fixed by PCSs or Cybernetics if you have that mod. So, yeah. And I... The reason why I want to keep Commander's Choice is because I don't want to have a rookie that has 75 aim, which is the highest a rookie can get, and then suddenly he turns into a hoplite. Heck no. <laughs> he should at least be a ranger. Or a sh well, sharpshooter is perfect, but a ranger would still be better than a hoplite with that much aim. So yeah. Another thing is about hoplites. So, let's go with our best hoplite here, Marte. Should I say coolest looking hoplite too? Because I customize her myself. Um, the hoplite dangle, it will fail if they don't have enough dodge. I think I sent her to a training mission covered up twice for dodge. That's why she has this much 
And hoplites have enough, even without doing the covert ops. But if they don't have enough, the dangle doesn't work. They get hurt, they get wounded. So, yeah, because the uh, guard ability... It basically, re basically reduces the hit. If it's a crit, it becomes a regular shot. If it's a regular shot, it becomes a uh, graze. If it's a graze, it gets deflected. If it's a miss, it's a miss. So, yeah. But without that dodge, it's the hoplites are not that useful. So, yeah. Okay, I, I want to talk about sharpshooters next. Um... Uh, should I go with Zandre? 495 XP. Where's Alice? Oh, Alice actually ha did more in this campaign than Zandre did. So let's go with Alice. Not to mention, that is a pretty face. I'm glad I customized her this way. I mean, wouldn't you date her? <laughs> I would. But yeah. Um... I want to talk about Snapshot. Because Death From Above is so good. But... I mean, if the mission type is right, Death From Above is better. But I like them being more dynamic. They, they won't need a pistol if they had Snapshot. And I gave them all Snapshot in this campaign, so... Oh yeah, and this won't happen anymore next campaign. No more same column abilities. So yeah, I might keep them with Snapshot next campaign. Yeah. And lastly about my learnings is the things... Uh, are the things that I didn't learn. Well, there's only one actually. I didn't learn crap from Baby Chosen. I did not learn anything. It was too easy. Um... Yeah, I wish I did that regular Chosen before in my private campaigns. I just never really did. Sometimes I even turned them off. So, next campaign's gonna be interesting for me and scary. Stressful. So, yeah. Normal Chosen and good luck to me, right? <laughs> We're probably gonna have way more deaths next campaign and yeah I don't want to talk about it anymore it's just thinking about it stresses me out so let's go to my most memorable moments I think I want to start with Richard because of that funny thing that I made him do every time I get the opportunity or the need is throw the axe to the face yeah it's a free action so if I flesh even if he ha has a move after Flesh. Uh... He might not kill the target. So my... If he can blue move to the target, I'll throw one in the face, then slice. Then Flesh or something. So yeah, that's funny and memorable at the same time. And... Let's not forget about the luckiest soldier in this campaign, Dennis. If I remember correctly, in a data tap, he hit a 12% shot and I think he crit. How lucky is that? And he was the luckiest soldier overall. That wasn't the only time he was so lucky. So, yeah. Very memorable. Another thing, another memorable... Well, number of moments, Scarlet making things fly with her shotgun. Yeah, those were really fun to watch. And the next one is not really a moment, but let's go back to Boris. <laughs> this guy. He... It's not really a moment, but... He rose up so fast. He's a master sergeant. I, I started him with Lance Corporal and he overtook everybody here. He was below Strong, Kate, Pavlov, and he became master sergeant. Well, the major reason for that is that he had good stats. I mean, look, I didn't even give him a PCS. 
But look at those stats. That's why I promoted him first. I used the jets on him a lot to get him promoted first. Thanks to the Illyrium jets once again. Oh, <laughs> well, yeah. And, of course, who can forget a bad memory like... Losing a Shinobi with a guaranteed Spectre hit. Yeah. I should have sent her to the tile beside because she wouldn't be seen by that Spectre if I sent her there, but I... I sent her to a window, and she got killed. So sad. So yeah, if you're gonna save somebody, better make sure that soldier doesn't see anything. Not even an ally, maybe, yeah. So, anyway, let's go back. I mean, go back. Let's go to my... Whoa, what's that? Nope, nope, not this. <laughs> Minimize that. Let's go to the mods for the next campaign. So, first of all, I want to talk about the class mods. Yeah. Okay, there we go. I am gonna use Crasher, Heavy, Keeper, and Overseer. Those will be the new classes plus the Shadow Ops classes. Which is a bunch of classes. So that's a lot of classes, so it will... Uh, there's gonna be too much classes for the next campaign. But we don't have to use all of them. Like in Shadow Ops, I really don't like using the infantry. I just think the ranger is far superior. And they're, they're basically the same. Uh, the infantry just has a stun gun instead of a, shot, a double barrel shotgun, so... I'll use a ranger over that every time, so I might deactivate some of them in the mod menu. But one thing is Crasher and Keeper. I installed the Jane Kelly mod too, so yes, guys, we are gonna have Jane Kelly on the next campaign. And Den Mother. So those these classes are restricted to just them unless I use console commands to to put the class on another soldier, but yeah. The heavy class is just here for fun. So is the overseer class. Well, the overseer um, removes the need for overwatch sentinels. And probably even rangers. So I want to try it out. I've been trying it in my private campaign. And, um... What else? I'm keeping the hoplite and the gunslinger. For sure, I love those classes. Even with the Gunslinger change, or would you say nerf, by removing Eagle Eye from the uh, skill tree, it could still appear in the XCOM deck, though. So, yeah. These things, I'm just not convinced I should use them. Especially the Ninja. Um, it, it was... Very hard to keep it alive. <laughs> so, yeah, not to mention swords are very scarce. I mean, it took us a long time to get a plasma sword in this campaign, right? And yeah, let's move this. And let's go to the stuff I'm not gonna use. I'm the commander here. Basically allows you to change the XCOM deck. You know, you can put Alpha Mike Foxtrot on everybody and call it a day. But of course... Don't do that, it'll kill all the fun in your campaign, trust me. <laughs> so, yeah. Not gonna use that anyway. Modify continent bonus. I guess this is not so OP, right? But I'm still keeping it out. Global weapon stat changer basically allows you to use weapon... your uh, the modded weapons to have long war numbers. So you won't have to build your uh, rifles and stuff. You, you get get them for free as long as you research the plasma or whatever. So I'm not going to use that. I use that in my campaign because I have hundreds, you know, 160 or so soldiers. So I don't want to make rifles for every one of those. But that's just in my private campaign. Yeah, no more extract corpses, no more hack plus in the beginning, which I think 
um, made us way more rich early on in this campaign, because I had these, like, 20 episodes uh, in the beginning, so, yeah, won't have that anymore, and, yeah, the rest are pretty much the same from the uh, this campaign, so, yeah, most of them are cosmetics anyway, oh, by the way, don't worry, if you're gonna copy my mod list, don't worry about these missing dependencies, because, for example, Frost Legion, it requires a better advent, but Mod Jam will negate its need for it. And I have true primary secondary, so, yeah. It's the same as this, it's just not recognized for some reason. And Mod Jam, I just didn't put this, because I never really did that, and how often will you use that anyway? Oh, this is the one that turned Lance, or the Templars, into, you know, shieldless ones for Long War. And, oh, this one I updated to the Redux version. It's basically the same, and once again, just not recognized. Uh, Shadow Ops. Oh, this comes with Long War. Of the Chosen already, so no need for that. Same with these. So, yeah. Ballistic Shields. Yeah, also this. True primary secondaries, but yeah, not recognized. Okay, so I want to show you guys. Let, let's go to the main menu. I'm... Yeah, if, if loading takes too long, I'll just skip it. Okay, so character pool. I want to show you guys the changes I made. This is how I look now. I like it. And Isaac! Come on, load. There, see, that's why it loaded too long. He is way more tactical now. Scarier, if you ask me. Changed his glasses, too. Arturito, also way more tactical. And Ivy... Yeah, I haven't fixed her already, because she's gonna do it herself. Yeah. Zandre, I kept the same, because I couldn't... Yeah, there's way more female armor <laughs> in the workshop, so... Yeah, this is as cool as it gets for him, I think. And Ramses, I'm not convinced by this. I might change this. Uh, drive, I just added a bunch more, uh, plating on him. Why can't I rotate him? Okay, Richard! You have more plating, too. Now, if you become a shinobi again, you look the part better now, because... You know, armor and stuff. Frontliner. And... Alice. Yeah so hot. <laughs> but yeah. Uh, I wanted to keep it sleeveless so those tattoos show. And um, yeah. Just use a bunch of... Um, it's pr probably from the same... Yeah. From the crossfire thing and... Except the legs. And for some reason it fit well. See? And... Lance, I finally... Showed his face. So we can remember his face, not just the Templar helmet, right? And lastly, Joe. Pretty much the same, because I can't replicate a cowboy style um, with all the other mod, uh, cosmetic mods I have. So I just gave him more um, cowboy tools, uh, except for that hammer, I guess. But comes with the ropes, so... So yeah. And by the way, lastly, I want to talk about how, the way I recorded the last uh, campaign. On settings, I fixed everything here and stuff. Yeah, I forgot to check that. And if you don't check that, you you should have the output resolution to 1920. It was on 720p. So that's why it was a little blurred. 
last season. So I yeah, it's gonna be better looking now. And yeah, I, I wanna stay. I wanna stay in 1080p, because yeah, 4K just slices off half your GPU's life, so. <laughs> well, 1440p, I might get to that someday, but not now. I'm still happy with 1080p, because my monitor is quite small, so the, the pixels are more compressed anyway. So, yeah. Um, By the way, Richard's final log is so inspiring. I hope... JP, I hope you make um, logs for everyone next campaign. I would love that. I mean, I'm not a good storyteller, and you are, so feel free to make stories about every soldier in the campaign. And yeah, Isaac. Yeah, you should make more logs too. You could, all you guys, just make logs for everyone and I'll choose the interesting ones and make a small, a, sh a short video of it, insert it in my episodes, yeah. And honestly, it's my girlfriend doing that, not me. She's way, she's way more creative than me. So yeah. And here's Richard's final log and hope to see you on the next one. Bye bye. The commander sent us on our final two missions, even joining us on the last one. The first was a slightly larger version of the regional network tower and it wasn't anything spectacular. We were able to complete it easily. Upon returning to the Avenger, we immediately geared up to head to the Elder's hidden base by way of the Psionic Gate. I was a bit surprised to see Ivy geared and ready when we entered the Shadow Chamber. I know the doctors had not yet cleared her for active duty. When I asked her about it, she just looked at me and said, I'm fit. If we don't win this fight, none of the rest will have mattered. Sobering but true. Lily was in complete frantic mode, running from station to station, triple and quadruple checking systems until Bradford told her to take a breath. She came and stood by my side as Bradford addressed the entirety of XCOM. And as motivational speeches go, I gave it a solid 9. Not that any of us needed motivating. I've seen some amazing and terrible places in this war, but the Elder Sanctuary put it all to shame. The sheer scope was astounding. Imagine a cross between the Great Pyramid and the Colosseum, with a dose of a Sigourney Weaver nightmare. The enemy were on us almost immediately and I've never seen so many powerful enemies in one place. But they were no match for us, we tore through the Elder's defense like avenging angels. When we reached the last chamber and confronted the Elders, we barely slowed, fanning out and pushing into the chamber quickly, dispatching the first Elder and moving to take command of the high ground in the center of the room. The second Elder appeared with a squad of soldiers and we immediately opened fire. One thing about them that made it difficult also made it simpler in a way. Every time one of us hit an avatar it would teleport out of range, but because of how we deployed, someone always was able to get the next shot. When I struck down the third elder, complete chaos erupted. The entire base shuddered like a dying animal. The Advent and alien soldiers fled in panic, completely ignoring us. As we rushed to the gate to return to the Avenger, the commander was suddenly driven to his knees, and we lost comms with Centro. I thought for a moment that we had won only to die along with our foe, but the commander stood, thrusting out his arms. That he was in excruciating agony was evident, but there was nothing we could see. The commander took a step forward, thrusting out his hands again, and the gate stabilized, and we all dashed through with the commander, the last man through. Back on the Avenger, it quickly became obvious that the entire structure of Advent was coming apart, 
like a house of cards in a tornado. Within hours, anything resembling a central authority had been completely collapsed. Even now, we are still dashing around the globe helping resistance camps deal with the throngs of refugees. This will likely continue for some time. On a personal note, we gathered in Shadow Chamber right after the mission to watch Dr. Tygen disconnect the commander for the Avatar body. The cheer that went up when the commander finally stood and raised his fist in victory was deafening and went on for at least five minutes. It was without a doubt the most emotional moment of my life. Lily caught my attention after the commotion and finally died down. I followed her into an empty medical bay after she closed the door. She turned and looked up to my eyes and waited. I was so flushed with emotion I couldn't decipher what she was waiting for. Still smiling, I caught my head clearly puzzled. After a few moments, she snorted. Richard Falcone. You are the smartest dumb man I've ever known. Then she wrapped her arms around my neck and kissed me. Just like that, I had a new most emotional moment in my life. I can't say where this new elder free world will take me. But I know wherever it is, I will not be there alone.